Welcome to Springville Seventh-day Adventist Church online here in Melbourne, Australia. I am Pastor Victor Acuna, and I am really happy to be here with you once again on another beautiful, beautiful Sabbath day, praising our Lord together. The topic for today is called Certainty in Our Trials, which leads us for the question for this week, which is, if he knew that God was going to make everything okay for you tomorrow, how would it make you feel today? I repeat it. If he knew for certainty that God, God was going to make everything okay tomorrow, how would that make you feel today? Comment below. Now, for contact details, or if you would like to support the ministry of this church, please see the details in the description down below. Let us have a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you for the privilege it is to be with you, praising the Lord together with our brothers, our sisters, with anyone that comes together and join this church as we praise you. Please be the guest of honor. We ask you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to sing our first hymn for today, which is hymn 529, Under His Wings. The lyrics are in the description down below. Under His wings I am safely abiding Though the night deepens and tempest a while, still I can trust Him, I know He will keep me. He has redeemed me, and I am His child. Under His wings, under His wings, who from his love can sever. Under his wings my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Last verse. Under his wings, oh, what precious enjoyment, there will I hide till the trials are o'er. Sheltered, protected, no evil can harm me. Resting in Jesus, I'm safe evermore. Under His wings, under His wings, who from His love can sever? Under His wings my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. I don't know about you, but it's been a very challenging year, hasn't it? Uh, my body, in the beginning, when, when this pandemic started, because I didn't know what I was doing as far as uh, starting up a, a YouTube, you know, with, with David doing everything on YouTube, I've never really been a YouTube person. I've never been a, a media person, <laughs> never put myself on TV. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> this 
This is strange, but it's got to be done for at least to keep the church going or to keep some form of co- a church going. And, uh, but for the first few weeks, I had to, I had to basically, uh, you should have seen me, I, I, I was sometimes working 18 hour days. Next time I'll come, I'll bring, I'll bring the, I, I, I prepared a video to show uh, during the regional the other day. If you watch the regional, it's, it's there. But uh, but next time I come, I'll, I I will show it to you, uh, so that you know exactly what what went through, uh, because I had two churches to to do this with. You see, the other church I had to start up a YouTube video because they didn't have one, they didn't have a YouTube channel, so I had to learn a lot of stuff. You you wouldn't you know if you have never done that and you had to learn it within just a week or a couple of weeks. I had a crash course that normally people would take maybe a month to do. I had to cram it all in, and, and hopefully I was doing the right things. In the beginning, when I was recording things, I had to do it about uh, one day with my daughter. Just that fifth, a 15-minute recording that we did with my daughter, uh, J- Jazz, and my other daughter, Victoria. They were helping me, and my wife too, with the piano and playing the guitar and all that. And... Uh, it, when when I was doing all that, I, I tell you, and I was doing two two services every week in both churches, you know, for the first couple of months, I was losing weight. Uh, I was I lost a lot of weight just within a few weeks. I lost ten kilos. And my my wife and my children said, "Oh, you better start eating. Well, why don't you?" Because I was eating, but I was I was uh, I, I was never sitting down. I was going here there. A busy, 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 you know, doing things, and and you may think um, that, that that surely that can cannot take time. But if you're into the, this sort of thing, I tell you, it's a it's a full time job, <laughs> and uh, and uh, I didn't want to get get into that. Uh, and I so I started saying to others at the, at, the, at the Spanish church, I said to them, we gotta get into it, otherwise people. People will 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 uh, disconnect with the church. They won't want to have church anymore. And so, uh, but I, I will I will reserve that. You know, next time I'll show you a five minute video. That's all it is, and it's 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 better than what I'm saying it to you now. Um, but yes, so but later on, however, just talking physically, my body started putting on weight because. <laughs> You know, we had more restrictions, remember, from June? And uh, so we had to have masks when we went out, masks when we went in. So instead of losing weight, I was putting on weight. And so uh, my body's going up and down, you know, in all of this. I've tried to keep as healthy as possible. But it's almost impossible to be too healthy when uh, things like this are happening, right? Um, you try your best, you do your best, and I'm here to tell you that I'm just like you. <laughs> uh, that I am not, I'm not a, a special case. I'm saying to you, God has been looking after me. And just like it says in, in, um, in James chapter 5, I'll, I'll just read to you this text in James chapter 5. The book of James. Chapter 5. It says here, Elijah, talking about Elijah, he was a great prophet, right? It says, Elijah was a man just like us. You know, sometimes we think that the people in Scripture are super, are super humans. But the Bible says, that those people were exactly like us. And I am just telling you here today that all of us have this in common. We're all, we're all children of God. And we all have just one father. Even though I am a pastor, my father is still, you know, the father, my father in heaven, just like yours. And so... I am saying to you, whatever I am going through, probably you also have gone through. 
In the beginning, as you know, there was a lot of us, us, us uncertainty. We didn't know what to do, right? Uh, we've never had a pandemic in our lives, so it was all new. <laughs> we ha they said to us, you have to wash your hands for 20 seconds, right? I still do, and I count up to 40, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, you know, I count to 40, and I know that by doing that, I'm going to get 20 seconds at least. Sometimes, depending on how fast I go, it could go up to 30 seconds. But that's okay. That's okay. Now, but see, before, in fact, I asked some people during the year, I said, when you wash your hands, how, uh, do you take 20 seconds? They oh, no. I said, well, you should, because if you, if you don't, you're not going to get rid of your, your bugs, right? So I said, wash your hands properly. Because if we had a, an infection, just like what's happening in, in the country that I was born in Chile, or in the States, and you did that, you just wash your hands quickly and just put, put you know, and just dry them up really quickly like that, you would be infected for sure. Um, so, yeah, like, like, you know, in some countries right now, like Chile, like, like the place I was born, you know how many people they have every day being infected right now? Every day. Between uh, 1,200 and 2,000, every day. You know how many people die there every day in a country that is about the same size as Australia? About 50 people every day on average. So just because nothing is happening here, don't think that there is no infection. There is. So don't, don't, uh, don't throw this mask away. Don't throw the, your washing hands away. Because, you know, God has, has, has allowed us to live in this place. But he also says to us, you've got to be disciplined. And God's people, one of the things that God's people are, are disciplined people. That's what it means to keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. We belong to our Father in heaven. And we ought to be the most disciplined people, the most loving people at the same time. But just know that. And that is, that is, that is, we're about doing the right thing. But today's sermon, I entitled it, Certainty in Our Trials. Look, if you come with me, right, with, uh, to the book of uh, Philippians. And Philippians is probably one of my better, best books. Especially if, you, if you're going through trials, read Philippians again and again. You will see that it, it gives you a lot of comfort. The book of Philippians. Just, and I'll just, we'll just read through it. I could read the whole, the whole chapter because it's, it's, it's a beautiful book when you're going through trials. You know, Paul, when, when, when he wrote this book, he was in jail. He was in chains. He was in chains. Now, none of us, none of us have, none of us have, have, uh, have, have, uh, have been, have been, have been in jail. You know, for the sake of the gospel. He was in chains. He was in a dungeon. In, in, you know. And, and so, what happens, what happened, what happened to him is terrible. In Philippians 1, 6, he says to us, so that you know. So that you don't think that he had it easy. 1, 6, it says, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you, will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God begins a good work in you. God will finish it, right? Now, why does he say this? Because he knows that we will have trials. We will have tribulations. He knows out of all the, the disciples, he's been through trials, he's been through tribulation, and he's saying, when he is in your life, he will finish this work. And that should be comforting to us. He will finish it. He is with you. Sometimes we forget that God is with us. In, in Philippians 2 verses 12, 13, look what it reads. Sometimes we only read just one of those verses. But, but let's, let's read the two of them. It says here, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence... But now much more in your absence, continue to work out your salvation 
with fear and trembling. Now, he, he, he's, but, but you see, you might say, all right, we have to do it all on our own. No, he says, look, verse 13, it says, because or for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good, good purpose. God is in your life, and it doesn't matter where you are, whether you're having a peaceful time or whether you're struggling through life, he will take you. He will give you the will. He will give you the purpose. I am telling you this because sometimes, you know, we have, we are, you know, a lot of people nowadays, we are fatigued, right, with all of this. We are sick of this, right? Who wants to wear masks? <laughs> I don't want to wear masks. Who wants to, you know, be, be in, in washing your hands so many times in the day? Who wants to be putting sanitizer so many times in the day? Who wants to be writing your names and your phone numbers everywhere where you go? Life should be easier, right? But, but you know, when Christ is in your life, it doesn't matter what comes your way, you have strength. You know, I, I'd just like to jump to the end of, the end of Philippians. 4, 10, 13, 4 verse 13, Philippians 4 verse 13. It says, it says the following, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I can do everything. Why? Because Christ is in his life. Christ is in my life. Yes, it, 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 look, look. Somebody who can do everything is not that they, they, they don't have a, they don't fear things. It's okay to be fearful of some things. It's, it's all right, right? We, we, for example, when, when, if there is a fire, it is okay, it is a good thing to be fearful of that fire, right? Because you don't want to put your hand in it. <laughs> you don't want to put your head in it. Not, certainly not your eyes in it. Right? And that's, that's okay to have that. It's okay. And, um, but when it, when it comes to stuff like the coronavirus, it's okay to also be careful. But to, for us to be terrified of it and, and to think that we, we, we are alone, that's where we need to come to the Lord and say, Lord, you are with me. Lord, please be with me. Everywhere I go, please be with me. If I have to do something, please be with me. And even if, we, if I get sick doing something, be in my mind also. Be in my life so that I never depart from your side. Whether it's good or bad, please be with me. Like Job, we should have this attitude. You know, in Job 13 verse 15, he says the following. The book of Job 13, verse 15. And it's, it's, uh, it says like this. Though he may, he may, he has lay me, yet I will hope in him. Though things may, in other words, though he, things may go wrong in my life, because God is not going to come with a knife and, 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 and kill you. But even if God, if he's saying, even if God allows things bad to go in my life, and yet, if you read the book of Job from the beginning, right, what happened to him? He lost his family, right? He lost his wealth. He, he, was, he got even sick. And what happened? And yet he said, praise be to God. I came into the world with nothing, and I go out of the world without anything. That's fine. That's fine. And when his wife even said to him, curse God and, and die, he said, woman, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, he should have been complaining. <laughs> he should have been complaining, but not Job. Not Job. He said, Everything is fine. God is looking after him. I know that there is a God behind here. He is, 
I will still keep on hoping. That was his attitude towards it. And while we are going through this year, what am my, the message today, it, it is simple. The message is that the same God that was with Job, the same God that was with Paul, the same Job that was with Jesus himself, is the same God that is with us. We should, be, we should rejoice and say to the Lord, Thank you, Lord, because you are with us. You, you have taken us all. Look, none of, you has, none of you have been sick that I've known of. And, and, and it doesn't matter, if, even if it's been hard, but we're still here. We're still continuing, right? Somebody, please, please say, Amen. Oh, nobody says amen. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll ask you. Has God been with you all this year? Say amen loud if, to that. Please. Amen. A little bit louder because it's being recorded. Amen. Those little children at the back, I can't hear you. Say it loud. Amen. Good, good. Because people need to know, they need to be refreshed that God is with us. God is with us. Don't let people outside say, oh, there is no God. Look what's happening here. There is a God. He's looking after us. You know, let me tell you. Uh, on, on Thursday, I was here for the last few days. I've been here helping the church to clean up a little bit. With Ajit, we came. When was it? On, on Tuesday or Wednesday, right? And we were here cleaning up a little bit. And, and some of you have been doing uh, uh, working bees, and that's good. But we came to do the last bits at the front there, just to clean up the, the front and leave it nicely. And while I was here, you know, just, just on, on Thursday, uh, during the day, I came. And uh, I, was, I was, you know, cleaning, cleaning the, front, the, front, uh, the, the front doors to leave them nice. And all of a sudden, this man comes and says, he says, oh, uh, look, I'm a concrete cleaner. I could clean up all your concrete. He says, and he says, uh, I've just started a job, a business, and I'll do, I'm willing to do this for nothing for you. First time, I'll do it for nothing. So I don't know if when you came in here, did you realize that all that was nice and white, right? And yet we've been away for a whole year. <laughs> and on top of that, we, we've had somebody that's been leaping at the front there. But did you notice anything? It's all nice and clean. Praise the Lord. He is looking after us. He looks after even this building. He is working behind the scenes. I didn't ask that man to come and, and give me that for nothing. I didn't tell him. Come and do that for nothing. I didn't say that. He, said, he offered it. And I said, because this was Thursday, I said, would you, would you be able to come tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning? I'll be here. And he said, yes, I'll be here. And he came with his truck and he did a good professional job. He had a, he had a, a, a steam cleaner, big one, an industrial one. And also he had hose, uh, high pressure hoses and, 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 and all these other things that he needed. And he, he was here for almost two hours. He cleaned just about everything around. <laughs> and, and, and some of us may say, you know, the Lord is not with us. I say to you, the Lord is with us. I could tell you many stories. This is just some of the things that have happened to me recently. In the beginning of the year. Well, well remember all those, all those, all those uh, when people were panic buying, right? Toilet, remember the toilet? <laughs> Right? A lot of people went without toilet. I said to the Lord, because I was really busy, I couldn't go shopping all the time. I said, you know that I'm really busy. You know that I don't have time. I'm doing two churches at the same time every week. And so when I go shopping, because back in, back in those days, I was the one that was doing the shopping. My wife, she, she had to go to work and she, you know, she, she had to basically face a lot of people that were sick with coronavirus. <laughs> and so I said to her, look, you stay, you, when you come home from work, just, just relax. 
I'll go and buy the, I'll do, do all the shopping. Every time that I go shopping, I say to the Lord, please be with me. Please, please let it be that, that I, I get everything that I need. Nothing else. I wouldn't say anything else. You know what? Every time I went to the, the, the supermarkets, there was toilet paper. There was everything. I never went without any toilet paper. And yet in the beginning, we, we didn't have, we didn't have, we only had just uh, food enough for a week. You know, this pandemic caught us unprepared. And I said, and, and in the beginning we thought, oh no, we're going to go without. But uh, we prayed, you know, like Elijah prayed. He was just a man just like us. Elijah prayed and God answered. And I said, thank the Lord. One day I went to put uh, petrol in, in uh, 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 you know, at, at one of these calls expresses. And, and, uh, and you say, uh, so what? So what? Yeah, but while I was there, guess what? They had toilet paper inside the, inside the you know, where, where they were selling toilet paper. And I thought, oh, I'll buy one. Okay, so I, I, I bought my, 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 my petrol and I bought toilet paper. Things like that happened to me time and time again. How can I say there is no God? I say to you, there is a God and He's powerful. And I thank Him. I praise Him. All the time, because he is with us. He is with us, and he's a most powerful God. You know, we, we may have a lot of a lot of a lot of temples that are big temples here that are Buddhist. But you know, people they carry their traditions. That's fine. They have beautiful. I, in fact, uh, during this pandemic, I've even made friends with those those uh, people at the front. You know. The you know the I friend I made friends with the keeper of the of the manor there where the where all these Buddhist monks uh, sleep right I don't know if you have noticed and uh, he was giving me things and I said oh you you have beautiful beautiful temples out there you know and I said but look God the God that we have just like in Elijah's time he presented himself not in an earthquake not in a huge thing. But he presented himself in a whisper, right? In, a, in the silence, in the simpleness of life, he presented himself. And to us, even though we don't have these majestic places, we, don't, we, we, we are not billionaires, but the God that we have, he is the richest man, he is the, the, the most powerful being in the whole universe, and he can do anything for us when we ask him in faith. And I say to you, praise the Lord because we are here today and we have health. And we can praise the Lord for that even though things are still hard. And uh, no doubts about it. So we're going to finish right now. We're going to finish our, 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 our sermon for today. And we're going to sing our last, last hymn, which is 526. Because he lives. For our last hymn for today, we're going to sing hymn 526, Because he lives. God sent his son. They call him Jesus. Jesus, he came to love, he learned forgive, he lived and died to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior. he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future 
life is worth the living just because he lives. Last verse. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still, the Kama assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future a life is worth the living just because he lives let's have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much that because you live, we can face tomorrow. Because you live, Lord, we can face our trials right now. So, please, Lord, continue to be with us so that we can find strength in you to face anything that comes our way because you are in our lives. We thank you so much. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Remember the question for this week, which is, if you knew for certain, if you were 100% sure, that God was going to make everything okay in your life tomorrow. How would that make you feel today? Comment below. Also, please continue to encourage your friends, your own family, start with your family, then go to your friends and your neighbors, because we still need encouragement in these times. There is one more thing I would like to add to all of this, and by now you would know what it is, and that is may God bless you, and may He keep you safe. Amen.